everyone and welcome i'm excited to show everybody um my completed pages for the month of month of march this is one of my favorite videos to make and watch uh just because it gives a lot of coloring inspiration <laughs> and motivation so uh first i want to say so i did finish a picture in a million cute animals but i it was a buddy color and we haven't shared pictures with each other yet so i won't show this this month i'll show it next month um i just want to say that <laughs> and then um i have a whip in my collection of jars black background uh and it's almost done uh this is with ink tents i wanted to try ink tents on this paper and it it did buckle a little bit but it took it pretty well so yeah and I love how the colors just pop because of the black. So there's that. Okay, so first off, I colored this. Uh, this is from Whimsy Girl uh, Holidays coloring book. Uh, I colored it on regular, just like, I think 110 pounds, 150 pounds. Uh, yeah, 110 pound uh, pen and gear card stock. Uh, it's really smooth, so it doesn't take to certain pencils as well as others. But um, anyways, so I did a marker base for her shirt, pants, and um, her hair. And then I shaded over the top of that. And I used pastel pencils for um, the rainbow alcohol marker for the background. And thankfully, it did not die on me. I had so many alcohol markers. Like, every time I used them, they just started dying on me. So, like, a uh, relief. I think it barely made it. So, my alcohol markers are on the older side now. So, they're just starting to die. <laughs> Uh, I added some pearlescent watercolor uh, to the clouds to kind of add this magical effect to them. So I think that's really pretty. And then I added some gold fine tech embellishments on these little details and then on her eyelashes. I thought that would be kind of fun. So yeah, I really enjoyed working on that. Next up. Uh, I colored in Mini Inklings by Tanya Bond, and this one was super simple, and I saw this picture and immediately I knew I wanted it to be very, very pastel, <laughs> and I think th uh, I accomplished it, look at that, uh, and then I added some Fine Tech Silver to her shirt to just add a little bit of a fun pop, um, I used fine tech a lot this month, uh, but yeah, I used pastel pencils for everything except for the skin, which was polychromos. Um, so yeah, and then because I had completed those two in like within the first day of March, it's like you know what? I'm gonna do something ambitious. <laughs> I'm gonna finish my work in progress in Villain San by Thomas Lapotomic, and. Oh boy, howdy, it took a long time. Uh, it took a few days. So, um, all of this mosaic was colored and the background was done prior. And then I colored this stone part and the leaves, the birds, the butterflies. Uh, I really like the moss effect that I got on the stone. And, uh... Yeah, it's, there's a lot going on on this page. So it was uh, a bit of a challenge to figure out what colors I wanted to use. And I ended up just going back to um, like taking red and putting reds on the butterflies, the fairies, and then taking blue. Just so it um, ties in with this mosaic. Uh, and... <laughs> The butterflies took, I think, like three hours to do. I used uh, luminance pencils for the butterflies and the fairy wings and for all of these leaves. 
uh, and I love how vivid they are. I did not feel guilty about using them in this book because this book is a masterpiece. Uh, and then uh, I used polychromos for the birds and uh, the rest of the other details. Uh, and like these leaves took three hours too, so it took a few days to get everything done. <laughs> Uh, but I think it's definitely worth it, and I'm counting it as two pages because it's a very intense double page spread. And uh, I am proud of the fact that I've done one in Thomas Loftomic's books because I tend to avoid uh, double page spreads because they intimidate me. So, yeah. Next up. I colored a picture in The Fantastic World of Brothers Grimm by Forrest Diver, and I did a picture... where is it? It's hiding from me. I know it's in back. Oh, it's the last picture. <laughs> uh, so I did this one. I loved working on it very much. Uh, I am intimidated by uh, Forrest Diver's books because he has a lot of foliage, and I tend to... I mean, it's not my favorite thing to color all the time, so... Uh, but I didn't mind coloring it here, because I used a bunch of different greens. Uh, so I based, and I based all of the greenery, the alcohol marker, and the bear. And I, if you can tell, my bear alcohol marker started, di started dying on me, and the green was dying. So, yeah. Uh, but I... Uh, really love the colors and just how bright and vivid it is. Uh, I use Brute Finger pencils to shade everything. Um, and since this is Rose Red and Snow White, I tried to keep the colors like this is like winter and this is like roses. Um, so next up, uh, I completed a picture in the white background version of Collection of Jars. And I did, oh, that's right here, <laughs> I did this picture, um, I don't mind this, this is a printing mis mishap, so, <laughs> uh, I based everything in alcohol marker, uh, and I added these cute polka dots, and I love the, um, very bright warm colors, and this cute teddy pair. Uh, I did the background with pastel blue pan pastels. I think it's too light, but I don't really know if I want to, like, how would I fix it kind of thing without getting pastel everywhere. So, <laughs> anyways, this was a super quick and fun color. Uh, next up, I have Tales from the Forest Kingdom by Hannah Carlson. I love this book. And this is the picture that I colored. Uh, I spent a few days working on this one. Um, yeah, I just was really pushing myself this month. <laughs> I did a lot of things that were out of my comfort zone. Uh, so I used um, all, all of the elements were colored with the um, luminance pencils. And then the background, I used this, uh, like, coppery pan pastel. Uh, and it came, it went on the paper a lot lighter than I thought, but it does add, like, this nice, soft kind of a shimmer, which is hard to, uh, it's kind of hard to see, but it's really pretty. And I'm really happy with how this turned out, and I had so much fun working on it. Next up... Mystic Misfits by White Stag. I did this alien. Um, and this was super fun. It was super quick and easy. I used glitter gel pen for the crystals. And then I used Fine Tech watercolor for the halo around her. And then for her eyes to kind of add like this otherworldly effect. Um, since she's an alien, and this watercolor like goes from like purple to blue, which is kind of fun. Uh, and then 
all of the skin and other shading is done with El Paso pencils. Um, so that was fun to work on. Uh, next up, I finally colored uh, in the Jashley Coloring Heaven book. I don't think I have colored in any of these yet, so besides the chibi one, now that I say that, but uh, yeah, this is the picture that I did. Uh, it was a lot of fun to work on. I usually don't enjoy doing like a lot of foliage, but for some reason I really liked doing this one. Maybe it's because like all of the shapes were very different and I used different grains for the different leaves. Uh, and um, all of it is done in polychromos. I really like how uh, polychromos works on this paper. It goes on really nicely and um, yeah I'm excited to color more. Uh, this one kind of has a storyline so I didn't want to come up with the characters uh, like color scheme uh, so it can stay consistent. So I was like you know what I'll do I'll do the tiger. And I think this is in my 10 untouched books to color challenge for myself. I can't remember. Uh, let's see, next there is Magical Dawn by Hannah Carlson. And let's see here. Just wanted, for some reason I thought I did two, but I think I just did one. Yeah, so I did this one. Uh, it's the very last picture in the book. I love this uh, image. I've always wanted to color it, so I'm glad I finally did. I had a lot of fun working on the apple and making it as realistic as I could. Uh, and I decided to make this bug look like it was gold and silver to kind of fit the jewel theme. Uh, and this background was super fun to do. It's just uh, blue acrylic paint and I just wanted it to like have a lot of visual variation. <clears throat> I'm not like as happy about the emerald. I think I could have done better but I had tried to do a different color gem and I was trying to do like all these different colors and it wasn't working so I erased it so that might be part of it. Um, but uh, I also added some fine tech silver embellishment. Uh, so there's that in Magical Dawn. I need to color in this one more. I think I've only completed one other page in there. So next up is A Million Sloths by Lulu Mayo. I did this one. Loved working on it. Uh, it's got fine tech embellishments right here and then I just added this soft pink around the tree and I wanted to keep like all of these owls like kind of more and birds more pastel and um, I used pastel pencils for them and then polychromos for the sloths and the tree branch and then water-based markers for all of the leaves. And that was super fun to work on, and I think it turned out so cute! Uh, let's see. Next up is Mouse Guard. I love this coloring book. Uh, I am only using ink tents in here, um, which there is, uh, there are a couple pictures, um, that I did color without ink tents before I had them, uh, but... The re most of the rest will be done in ink tents. So this is the picture that I did. I've been wanting to do this one for a really long time, but I've just been um, putting it off because I wanted to add a glowy effect, but I didn't really have the motivation <laughs> to do that. So I had the motivation this month and it was fun adding just like some glowing reflections here and on the sword. And it's always like a super fast color to use ink tents in this book um and uh yeah so that was super fun to do next up 
is Luna by Marina Trolla. I did this picture right here. And I think it turned out really cute. I'm really glad that I went with a pink background because I think it just makes it more of like this sweet, magical um, type of a scene where, you know, she's playing with the fawn or the doe. I guess it's a doe. I don't know. I can't tell. Um, but yeah, I used polychromos for everything except for the background, which I used uh, my uh, Creta color pencils. I wanted to try them out. So um, yeah, I think it turned out really cute. And I love how vibrant the green and pink are together. Uh, next up, uh, I colored a picture in Romantic Country, the first tale. And <laughs> I've been wanting to get her newest book, but I was like, you know what? I don't really... I'm always so intimidated to color in her books, so I need to start coloring in her... Um, books that I have already before I buy another one. So I decided to color this picture and I think it turned out really awesome. I really love it. Um, I uh, used ink tents for the fields of grass and it worked. I was surprised at how well it worked actually. Um, like it didn't buckle a whole lot like there is a little bit of buckling where I accidentally used a little bit too much water um, but it actually blended really smoothly because of how smooth the paper is and it was really nice because one of the things that intimidates me about her books is like how much grass there is <laughs> I I just have a hard time coloring grass so now that I know that Ink Tense works well, I think I will be coloring more of her books, uh, more of her pictures. So, um, yeah. Uh, he is... See, everything else is done with Prismacolors except for the sky, which I did with Polychromos, uh, which I took my time on the sky, which I... <laughs> You know, I'm really trying if I take my time on the background, but uh, I think it really adds to the picture and I wanted it to make like it to look like it was dawn so the sun is rising and he's playing his accordion with the sunrise. Uh, anyways, I just love how bright and just, yeah, it just is a very happy picture. So, yeah. Oh, and I did add some lines to this bench and some shading but it's kind of hard to tell from far away uh next up i <laughs> colored a picture or a double page spread in another book that intimidates me all of the minute detail in this book just like this oh man i get overwhelmed so uh when i was like had the um, I was in the mood to color Ivy and the Inky Butterfly, so I was like, you know what, I've got to seize it while I can, and this is the picture that I was drawn to. Uh, I immediately knew how I wanted to color it. Uh, I added all of these different Fine Tech Gold colors to the bee's wings, um, to add just, like, this really fun effect, uh, and then the bees are done with Brut Funer pencils. Um, and they they worked really well on this paper. And then the background, so I did the background first. It was just a watercolor wash. And I intentionally like made it look like it was, I didn't want it to look smooth. But I did want like all of the lines going in the same direction, so would have some consistency um, but yeah I'm really happy with how it turned out it's super fun to work on and I'm glad to have another <laughs> spread done in this book okay Geomorphia by Kirby Rosans I completed two pictures 
I think this might be my next book that I try to finish just because it's a lot more doable and yeah. So the first one that I completed is this one, uh, which is really cool, I think. It turned out really cool. And the funny thing is, um, later this month we had a tornado warning <laughs> pretty early in the morning. So um, thankfully, no tornado touched down in our area, but there was a lot of wind damage uh, like 20 minutes away from us. So that was kind of sad, but... Um, still really grateful because it could have been a lot worse. Uh, so I used ink tints for everything except for the sky and like these little details. I think I just used prisma colors. Um, but I really liked this smoke or it's not smoke, this cloud, <laughs> cloudy dust. <laughs> It's been a day. Uh, and then I added some red to the cyclone part of the tornado just to add uh, some visual contrast to separate it from the rest of the clouds. And then uh, I used the pen pastels for the sky and I looked up what the sky looks like during a tornado and there were a lot of gray ones but I didn't want gray and I did see some that were like this kind of reddish haze so I thought that would look nice. Next the other one that I did is this one. This is one of my favorite pictures in the book and because of that I've been putting it off because I didn't know how to like transition the sand to the ocean. Uh, but I think it turned out really cool. Uh, I just, like, kind of blended some blue into these, where it's starting to look like waves. Like, right here, it looks like a wave. And then, like, right here. Uh, and, yeah, this was, was super fun. And it took, it did not take me very long to color, which I thought it was going to take forever. Uh, which is another reason why I was putting it off. And then it was like so fast and fun. Uh, so it's all done in ink tents except for these little details and the sails. And then the clouds are pastel, pen pastels. So, yeah. That was really fun to do. Uh, next up, I have a picture from Worlds of Wonder by Johanna Basford. And... So this one I used Prismacolors, I believe. Uh, I think it was just Prismacolors, or is that Polychromos? Oh, it's Polychromos. Yeah, that's Polychromos. Um, I wanted this sky to like have a kind of a galaxy effect, so I I think I used like three different colors for the sky, and then I added some gold fine tech for the stars and then some pearlescent for the moon and I think it turned out really cool. My favorite part was working on the uh, dirt <laughs> and the tent. Those were both really fun though the whole picture was really enjoyable to work on. Okay next up we have a picture from Starry Night Special Coloring Heaven by Wee Shen Ong. And let me tell you, I was so excited when I saw this in the sneak peek because I have been wanting her books forever, but I've like never got them because I, you know, wasn't sure if I would actually color them because there's a lot of detail. Um, and I actually had one of her PDFs coloring books in my cart and I was like, you know what, I'll wait a couple days. And then I opened my email and I was like, oh, I... I don't have to buy one. <laughs> it's coming to me. So, of course, I had to color a picture and it was so fun. I did this image right here. Um, I decided I wanted to be crazy and I painted all of these little stars <laughs> with Fine Tech watercolor. Uh, it's a good thing I have a tiny, tiny paintbrush. And then I did silver for all of the dots. 
um, and then I also did gold embellishments for her crown and for the frame, so that was really fun. And then I used Brute Funer pencils for everything else. They worked very nicely on this paper, um, and I, yeah, I loved working on this picture very, very much, and I tried to use, I mean, I say I was like, I don't use a lot of purple, but then I realized, actually, I do use a lot of purple. But at the time, I thought I was going outside of what I normally choose. Uh, so, anyways. Love how that one turned out. Okay, next up. I finally finished a whip in here. Uh, it's been a whip ever since I started my channel, I think. So... A really long time back in the day when it was like a hot mess <laughs> so uh yeah this is the picture that i completed this very fabulous foxy lady uh so what i had colored prior was her sleeve right here and then this part of the bustle and then um this is what i colored this month so you can tell, like, I have gotten better coloring, so that was kind of fun to see, like, the colors, I just feel like, are more vibrant, and you can see the folds in the fabric better. And then I also colored this, and the tail of the fox in the face, which I think it turned out really cool, really nice, which I usually am not, I like, I say I'm not good at fur, but I, I really enjoyed working on the fur for that. Now this part, this umbrella, I was really confused what was going on all in this area. There's a lot going on, so I just pulled from some of the same colors from down here and here and just shaded. <laughs> so I don't know what this is. I mean, I think it's supposed to be like a parasol, but I don't really know what's like part of that and what's part of her hat. Anyways, so... Um, yeah, I'm so glad to finally have this done, and it will count for Lavelia and Coloring with Tees, um, Color Your Horde Challenge, and, um, Kate's Coloring Haven, her whipping the whips. I think she's still doing that this year. Uh, so, yeah, so glad to finally have that done. Uh, next up, I colored a picture in Fairy Miracles by Clara Markova. Uh, I colored this one, and this is a color scheme I don't usually go for, which is, like, more, like, darker pinks, and uh, I usually am, like, usually more pastel and light, so, um, I really enjoyed working on this picture. It's all done in Prismacolors, and I had fun doing the fur. I mean, it doesn't look realistic, but it does look like fur. And then, um, I, like, was trying to make her look kind of like a flower a little bit with the colors. And, um, yeah. And this didn't, I think this only took a couple days to do, which is pretty good for me for a Clara Markova book. Uh, it usually takes me a lot longer. <laughs> so... Super happy with that one. So cute. Okay, next up, we're almost done. This one and one more. Uh, I colored a picture. So usually I use ink tents in here, but I decided this picture was too detailed for ink tents in a lot of these areas. So I used Prismacolor pencils for everything. And I really love how it turned out. I love this bright purpley pink. I was in a purple mood this month. There's a lot of purple. Um, so I used like three different colors. I used my hot pink for the highlight. So I finally <laughs> broke out the hot pink again. I think I've only used it on a couple other pictures. So yeah. And then this background, the ocean color, 
is a pencil that I have never used before. So I finally used the pencil. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I am really happy with how it turned out. Oh, and I added some fine tech watercolor to these little fish. It's kind of hard to tell because they're so tiny. Okay, lastly, I colored a picture in Dream Race. And this one, I colored the last day of March. And I didn't think I would have it finished, but uh, I ended up being able to finish it in time. And it's this one. This is a page that I have always like been drawn to in this book, but I have just like been afraid of ruining it uh, or, you know, not making the poppies look the way that I want them to look. But uh, I did accomplish the look that I was going for. Uh, I love poppies. They were the flowers. They grew everywhere in my yard growing up. So um, I based it off of the ones in my yard. I know there's um, other colors too. I think there's yellow and red. I wanted the more red orange and it's all done in polychromos pencils and yeah I I just love how vibrant it is and just how like it just pops right off of the page so yeah super happy with that uh so that is everything that I've colored for this month uh pretty good I would say really good <laughs> Especially compared to last year when it was more like four or five a month. So, uh, yeah, let me know uh, which book, which page was your favorite. And I hope that you received some coloring inspiration and motivation. And I hope to see you next time. Happy coloring!